All right. Um, what I would like to do to begin with today is to review something called Coulomb's Law. Now, I would be surprised if you got this far without having seen Coulomb's Law somewhere. It is so important in all areas or many areas of science. But I also find that uh, uh, people saw it a while back and don't really remember very much about it. It just plays a big role in chemistry. So I'm going to start, and you don't have any uh, pages of notes on this, so I just want you to write this uh, down as you, as you choose. Um, and I just want to review a little bit about static electric charges, which are charges like, um, well, let's just say they're not the charges that move through a wire, they're the, like the charges on an ion. Um, and I want to start off by pointing out that um, you have experienced um, probably some time in the rare times, in the winter time, when the w air is dry here in Houston. You might have walked across the carpet or uh, slid across the seats in your car and reached for the handle and zap, you got a, a little shock. That is static electricity at work. And even though neutral matter contains an equal number of positive and negative charges, it is possible to, um, using friction, to s separate some of those charges. And um, I have a little video clip. I don't have any idea how loud it's going to be, uh, so be prepared here. Our sound system is undergoing some rather uh, bizarre things right now. But it may be quiet, may be loud. A Bakelite rad is rubbed with fur and brought close to a light sphere that is covered with aluminum foil. The sphere at first is attracted toward the rad. After it has touched the rad, the sphere is repelled. A device that generates ions in the air is brought near the rad and this causes the repulsion to stop. Next, a glass rod is rubbed with a piece of silk. When this is brought near the sphere, the sphere is at first attracted, but after it touches the rod, it is repelled away. What just happened? Well, first of all, the little sphere had no net charge on it but it could be what's called polarized by the presence of a charge. So it was first attracted to both a positive charge and a negative charge, but when it touched, then it took on some of that positive or negative charge, and it then became repelled from it because we had two charges of the same sign. Okay, let's keep going. Now, now the ball, the ball is, is left, left to hang, hang by, by itself, itself, and the, the Bakelite rod, rod is rubbed with fur and brought, and brought close to the ball, ball again. again. The, the ball, ball is now strongly attracted toward the Bakelite rod, and, and it continues to be attracted toward the rod until, until the device to remove electric charges is used. Okay, so um, Ben Franklin was the first person to um, study this uh, in a systematic way. And he proposed that rubbing glass with silk gives uh, a, a positive charge, plus charge, and that um, rubbing um, amber or plastic or bakelite with fur gives a negative charge. So based on that, what we have seen is the repulsive effect of positive positive and negative negative charges um, and the attractive effect of a positive and a negative charge. So these charges are measured in coulombs, and the basic charge unit on, uh, that, that can exist on bodies is quantized. Um, and what we have is a 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb is the smallest charge you can put on an object. That, of course, you may recognize as a charge on an electron or a proton. Um, now, <coughs> Charles Coulomb, uh, in the middle of his career, um, put forth the following um, uh, mathematical description of this. Suppose we have two uh, charged bodies. Um, well, I'll call this one charge body one and this one charge body two. Um, what he said was, if there is some charge in Coulomb's Q1 on body one, 
and Q2 on body 2, uh, and the distance between them is R, then the force that they, exi they exert on one another is, is proportional to the product of Q1 and Q2 divided by the square of the distance between them. Sort of looks like the gravitational law equation, doesn't it? If you've had physics and seen the gravitational law, it, it looks similar to this, only we're dealing with charges, not masses here. Uh, now, the force can either be an attractive force or a repulsive force, as we saw in that little clip. If both of the charges were positive, then that gives a positive sign to F, the force, and we call that a repulsive force, meaning that the two objects repel one another. Okay? And if one of them is positive and one of them is negative, that will make F a negative number, and that uh, produces an attractive force, as we also saw. And it doesn't matter uh, which one is plus and which one is minus. If they are different, we get an attractive force either way. And finally, the last possibility is if they're both negative, then a negative times a negative is positive. F is greater than zero, and so we have another repulsive force. So there's two ways we can have repulsive force, two ways we can have attractive force. And Coulomb, uh, we're not going to use actually Coulomb's law to calculate any numbers per se. What I'd like you to be comfortable with is understanding the uh, generation of the force by the positive and negative, the presence of the positive and negative charge, and which combinations give attractions, which combinations give repulsions. You can also modify this for the potential energy of the system, which we'll do in chapter nine, I believe, when we talk about ionic compounds. Uh, uh, the potential energy is equal to a different constant times the product of the two charges divided by not the square of the distance, just the distance. So uh, that's how Coulomb's law describes static charges. Does anyone have a question on that? Yes. K is a constant. It's, it's different for each one, but you only need that if you're going to actually calculate a value for it. You're not going to have to do that. So, um, I, There are K values are available in tables, um, or I, in principle, if you had a way to measure everything else, you could calculate K. But um, our purpose here is not so much to quanti quantify this as to know whether we have a stable situation or an unstable situation if we bring these charges together. Okay, other questions? Yes. That's the potential energy is equal to K prime times the product of the uh, charges divided by R, not R squared. Potential energy.